Marika with Kawartha Lakes Public Library. We're back for another week of summer STEAM. We have developed weekly projects that you can do at home this summer. Included with each project are some fantastic ideas and suggestions on how you can add in elements of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. We have kits ready for pickup that have all the materials needed for each project. Ask for them when you pick up library items at one of our open branches. If you can't get to a branch, no worries. Everything is easy to source and you probably have most of the items at home. This week we're using one of my favorite craft items to make an articulate puppet. Hi! Keep watching this video and I'll show you how to put it together. In the kit that we have ready for pickup at open branches, uh, you will receive a sheet with instructions as well as a printed out template of the body figures you'll need to make this puppet. We printed them out for you onto nice thicker cardstock. If you can't get to a branch, we have this template available for a download on our website. It's best if you print it off onto cardstock, but if you don't have cardstock, print just print on regular copy paper. Uh, and further on in the instructions, I'll explain to you how you can make your puppet stronger. You're also going to receive a bunch of these little gadgets. I love these. These are called round headed paper fasteners. They're also called brads. Uh, I picked them up at Staples. Uh, this box uh, comes, about a hundred of them come. They go for about four or five dollars. I've also found them at thrift stores and dollar stores, stationery stores. You can also get them online. They're fantastic. It's great to have a bunch on hand for crafts. You are also going to need some tape, a good pair of scissors, and something to color with. All right, let's get going. Okay, let's take a look at the template itself. So here we have the figure's head and their torso. Down below we have their upper legs, oops, their thighs, along with their lower legs and their feet, upper arms, lower arms, and hands. Uh, so you can decorate this and color it in any way you want. This is a time when coloring in the lines is not necessary. These are just guidelines. So if you wanted to, you could make them bigger. You could go outside the lines. Uh, I did one and I turned the feet into boots. I added little heels onto them and I didn't color all the leg. I colored the bottom part of the leg brown to make it look like boots. Here's my person all colored in. Uh, I gave them some hair. I went outside the lines and went up and down above the, ha above the head uh, and colored in some hair. And they have short sleeves on. So I went only went about halfway down on the upper arms and they have shorts. So I colored in a bit of the bottom of the torso in a short color and then about halfway down again uh, on the upper thighs. If you are working with just regular copy paper, at this point in time, you're going to want to glue something thicker to the back of your regular copy paper to make your puppet stronger. Um, what would be something good that you could attach to this to make it stronger? I'm thinking something like uh, a cereal box. Uh, that's a good thickness paper. Uh, you look around your house and see what you have, and you're just going to glue everything onto it. You could use a few different pieces of thicker paper that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to cut it out. So I'm going to follow along the lines and cut out each one. Uh, if you're not good at cutting, you might need someone older to help you with this part. Uh, no, if you accidentally amputate one of your appendages, one of the arms or legs, no worries. You can tape this back together. It's not going to affect how your puppet is made. So let's cut everything out. Just to keep on track, I'm gonna when I cut everything out, I'm gonna arrange it the way that my figure is displayed. Here's my figure all cut out, and I have uh, all the different arms and leg parts arranged the way I want it. it. With the lower arms, it doesn't matter. You can switch it whichever way you want the fingers pointing out. That's okay. With the feet, I think it would look kind of goofy if the feet were pointing in like that. Uh, so let's have the feet part pointing out. Okay, now we're going to start using these fasteners. Um, you can see on the corner of every part there's a little circle. You're going to need to poke a hole through them. This is, you, uh, you want to be careful at this part because you don't want to wreck it. You can fix it. Uh, 
don't sweat it. Uh, so you'll need something to poke through or punch a hole. If you've got a single hole punch, that's going to work the best. And you're going to find the spot, pop it through. You want to go more in than out when you're popping the hole. So I've got a little spot here at the shoulder and I'll do that with this arm as well. There we go. Now you're going to put the arm part on top of the torso part and then attach it using the fastener. So take your fastener, feed it through. You're going to keep the two little prongs closed, feed it through the arm and then feed that through the torso. Turn it over to the back and you'll see there's two little prongs, the, back, the, uh, the arm, two prongs on the fastener. You'll take the bigger one and fold it over and fold the other one over. Now you can reuse these over and over again. See how tight your arm moves. Is it tight? If it's too loose, you can make this, you can push it down a little bit further and make it a bit tighter. You want to be able to move it though. That's the beauty of these little gadgets is that you can move them. I don't like how long these prongs are. I'm going to fold them over one more time, just in half. And that hides it. See, I've sort of folded it half back on itself. I'm going to fold it over again. There we go. So that's the upper part of the arm. Let's say you don't have a hole punch. Uh, you could use something else to poke a hole. A little screwdriver will do the job. You're going to be careful here. I'm going to go more towards the arm part. Can you see that? More in towards the arm part than at the very top because I don't want to rip the hole. So I'm going to poke that through really carefully. Will it work? It worked. I poked a hole through. Just a little hole is all I need to get started. I'm going to take the fastener at this point. You might have to kind of wiggle the fastener around to get a good circle going. So there, my fastener is attached that way through the, I guess this is the elbow. And then whoop, I need to poke a hole through the other joint, the other arm there. I've got a hole, that's just a little hole. It's okay. Put my fastener through and fold it. I'm going to check and see, is it moving the way I like it? Yeah, it's holding it. If I turn it, it holds it, but it still moves. Okay, so now I'm going to fold these over again so I don't see the ends of those prongs sticking out. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to keep going and attach all these parts. Now, if something happens when you're poking holes and you get a tear in your piece, your project is not ruined. Projects are never ruined. They just need to be adapted. What I'm going to do here is mend this a little bit. I'm going to take a bit of tape. I could even take another piece of paper and glue it onto the back and then poke my hole again. And that extra piece of paper is going to go over the top. I have some tape handy though. So I'm going to put that, just fold it over the top of my piece. You'll barely notice it. It'll kind of look like a band-aid. Everyone has band-aids on their legs from time to time. So why should puppets be any different? And now I'm just going to go through my hole where it should be. Come on, hole. There we go. It's all good. I'm going to fit my bread through and fit this through again. There's my leg. Fit it through. Good as new. Oh, look at he's dabbing. Okay, my figure's all done. All the body parts are attached and they all move every which way. If you're happy with this, you're good to go. Let's say you want to steam it up. What else can you do? If you want to turn your figure into a puppet, here's an idea. I took a regular figure, just the same as this, and I took a straw and taped it to the back. You could use a straw, you could use a skewer, you could use a thin stick from outside. You'll need to have one on the torso to hold your puppet up and then maybe put one on an arm or an, a leg. You could put more on there. It depends on how good you are at holding different pieces of straw. You'll see with this puppet or with this figure, I cut off the head and reattached it using a brad at the neck so that my figure can be a little wishy-washy and waggle their head to and fro. Another idea is it to attach magnets to the back. 
of your figure. There's great thin magnets out there. This was a photo frame. Sometimes you can get uh, magnets, they're promotions from different companies that they hand out for free. And the beauty with these is, is that they're cuttable. With just a simple pair of scissors, you can cut a piece off. Glue them onto the back. And then you can stick your puppet onto something that is magnetic. You can see here, I put the figure onto a metal filing cabinet that I had at home. Uh, I think a lot of people, your fridge would probably be your best bet, but you can go around your house and see uh, what your magnets will stick to. Uh, we have another video on the website that shows you how to make a stop motion video. And if you put magnets onto your figure, you could make a video with it. We'd love to see a photo of your finished puppet, or if you did something clever with those paper fasteners. You can send us a photo by email. Our address is libraryadministration at kawarthalakeslibrary.ca or you can post it to one of our social media platforms. You can find us listed as Kawartha Library. It'd be great if you could add the hashtag SummerSteam to your photo. Come back next week for another great project, and until we see you again, happy steaming!